Sefer Tov. Today's Daf Yomi is Baba Basra Mem Chas, Baba Basra 48. We're going to start on 47b, five lines from the bottom. Today's Daf is dedicated for Shemir for the Chayalim, Hatzala for the Shwayim, and Yeshua for Am Yisrael. And this is Tara. I want to remind everybody that because tomorrow is Tisha B'Av, tonight and tomorrow is Tisha B'Av, we can't do the Daf Yomi on Tisha B'Av. So we're going to do it tonight at 5 p.m. And we won't do it the daf yomi on Tisha B'Av itself. You're not allowed to. So just like we serve Hashem by doing the daf, we serve Hashem on Tisha B'Av by not studying the daf yomi. So it says, Rav Huna, five lines in the bottom of 47b, to lo yu v'zabin zabine zavina. If they suspended him, they forced him, suspended him by his toes, so to speak, Rashbam says, and we force him to sell something, it's a valid sale. My time, well, what's the reasoning? Call the Mazabin Inish, he loved on his Lohavi Mazabin. Rafilo Hachi, Zabine Zabine. So, the first attempt at the Gemara is anytime somebody sells something, if it's going to be considered that obviously, anytime somebody sells something, you're, not, you're, not, you're only selling something because you're in need of something. And so, therefore, it's oh, every sale is, so to speak, under duress. And so, therefore, since every sale is valid, so therefore, in this case, also the sale will be salad, valid. Gemara says right away. The Gemara rejects that and says, "What kind of logic is that?" Dilma shani unsa dinavshe me unsa dachrine. Well, one is a self-imposed, uh, self-imposed duress. He needs money, and so therefore, he sells something. So there, you could say, "Well, sure, of course." In that case, he intends to sell it, but under this case. Other people are forcing him to sell. And so therefore, maybe he doesn't really want to sell it. This is not where he's deciding to sell. Others are forcing him to sell. So maybe it's not a valid sale under those circumstances. So we say, now what's the reason we know if you force him to sell, it's a valid sale. So the Gemara says, this is like a brisa, a brisa that we've actually had in Erechen, Kedushin, Yivamos, Rosh Hashanah, it's a rice that appears throughout the Shas. We know that when it comes to a sacrifice, you have to be willingly uh, willingly bringing your offering. But it says in the Pasuk, Yakriv Oso, but this is an extra verse because it already said Yakriv Venu. So what, what do we do from the fact that it says Yakriv Oso, he should bring the offering? We can force him to be willing to, uh, to willingly bring that which he vowed that he was going to bring. I might think we can even force him against his will to bring the vow that he promised to bring. Says the verse, the lyrics don't know. He has to do it willingly. Well, if he has to do it willingly, how does he bring such a vow? Okay, Tzad. So says the Gemara, we force him to bring it until he says, I actually want to bring it. Meaning to say, we force him to do it until he says, I want to do it. And so we see from here that if a person is forced, we could still say he's doing it willingly. So when you force somebody, but then he says, I want to do it, then we're going to say he intends to do it. Because in that case, he says, I want to do it. And so too by a sale. If he says, I want to do it, it'll be a valid sale because he intended to do it. Mara says, but maybe the case of a sacrifice where you're bringing a vow is fundamentally different from the case of a forced sale. Maybe that case is different. Because when he says, I want to do it, really he's saying it with a full heart because everybody wants to be forgiven. Everybody wants an atonement. So clearly we're going to say he's doing it with a full heart. So the Gemara says, El Amisefa. So we're going to derive it from the second cause of that price, which is not talking about atonement. The second cause, second cause of that price is talking about a divorce. It says, it says, so too says the Brisa. Excuse me. So too says the Brisa. We're going to say this by with respect to divorce, because it says in the Mishnah in Subos that there are certain people that we that we force him to give her a divorce. Somebody who has certain physical uh, physical. Um, ailments on their body and it's difficult for her to live with him so we force him to divorce her but if but the divorce has to be given willingly it has to be given me das so we force him until he says wrote until he says i want to do it 
So we see by divorce also, and there there's no kapara. We say by there, says the Gemara Kofano, so actually Yoma wrote on it. So we see from here by the case of a get also that you can force the person until they willingly accept. So we see that once you say, even though you're forced, once you say I want to do it, it's as though you willingly did it. So to here, the sale should be active, um, should be valid, even though it was forced. The Gemara says, no, maybe that case is different. Shani Asa, maybe that case is different. The mitzvah is because it's a total mitzvah to listen to the words of the sages. So since it's a total mitzvah to listen to the words of the sages, so therefore, for that reason, since it's a mitzvah to listen to the words of the sages, therefore, for that reason, uh, we're going to accept it. But generally speaking, if, if he's forced, we're not going to accept it. So the Gemara says, so what's the source? What's the reason why we know it's a valid sale that Rapuna says? Uh, what's the reason? What's the reason for Rapuna's position? The Gemara explains the reason is Svarahu. It's logical. Because he is being forced, therefore, Rapuna is saying it on his own logic. That because he's being forced, he says, yeah, I do, really do want to, in the end, I do want to sell it. And also, says the Rashbam, because there are two things. There's Yisurim and Matan Mos. He's, he's getting afflicted, so he decides to sell it. And also, he's getting money, so he's not losing anything. So in this case, since he's, he's also getting money, and he's really getting beat up, he actually had literally committed to selling it. That's how Rashbam reads the Gemara. So we see from here that if you're forced, Rafuna says, that if you're forced to sell something, it's a valid sale. So most of Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda challenges this from the case of the Mishnah at the end of Gittin, which was called a get mu'usa, a forced get. That if you force the Jew to give the get, so says the Mishnah, get him a be Israel kosher. That if it was a Jewish court that forces him to give the get against his will, if it was a Jewish court, it's kosher. But but right, that means to say where he says in the end, I want to do it. But uba akum apostle, but by an idolatrous court, even though he says, I want to do it, it's going to be disqualified. So so the Gemara's assumption here, Rashbam explains, is that by a Jewish court, it's kosher because he, in the end, wants to do it because it's a mitzvah to listen to the words of the rabbis. And by an idolatrous court, it's disqualified because since there's no mitzvah and he's being forced, he didn't really decide to do it. So this is a question of Rafuna because since there's no mitzvah, he shouldn't have desired, it shouldn't be like he really desired to sell it. So that's what Rashbam says is the, coach, is the question. By the Jewish court, it's kosher, but by the idolatrous court, it's disqualified. So we see from here that he doesn't really want to do it. But, but, but we continue with the Mishnah by an idolatrous court. If the Jewish court wants him to give the get, we can give him over to the idolatrous court. But by the idolatrous court, if we want him to, if we want the idolatrous court to force him, we can give him over and we can say to him, do what the Jewish court told you to do. But we see from here that by the idolatrous court, it's not a kosher get. But why? Why don't we say that? I wouldn't say that because he's being forced, Gamar Makna, that he really does want to do it. So Mar says, no. Mar says, am I? Why isn't it good? Why do we say there also? Because he's being beaten. He decided to divorce her. So Mar says, no. Yeah, technically speaking, that would have worked. Biblically speaking, it's it's kosher even if idolater uh, beats the Jew up and tells them to give the get. But Matam Amru Ba So what's the reason why they said but idolatrous court it's no good? We don't want every single woman going to the idolatrous court. And giving herself over to the idolaters and committing adultery just so that she can f- get them to be manipulated to uh, to to force her husband to give a get. So since we're worried basically that the women will find a different source of authority and thereby can manipulate them to her needs, we don't 
allow her, uh, we don't allow the idolatrous court to force him to give a gift. But biblically speaking, it would be valid because he really does agree. So now Rav Luna challenges Rav Luna from the Mishnah in Gittin, which we quoted yesterday, which we said yesterday. It says, Lakach misikrukun. Now let's say uh, you bought a, a sikrikun are these like mafiosos who strong-armed the person into selling the property. So the sikrikun have bought a property from a Jew. And then the Jew, uh, the sikrikun had forced Ruven to sell to them. And Shimon goes and buys it from these secret, and buys it from the mafia. And then he goes back, and he buys it back from Ruvain, it's a disqualified sale. So we say it wasn't for, it wasn't a good sale, because Ruvain didn't really want to sell it. So the Gemara says, but why? There too, why don't we say, Ruvain, listen, he was forced to do it, but in the end he did it. Meaning, meaning to say, the Sikrikun forced him to sell it because they gave him money and he didn't lose anything. So why don't we say his sale to the Sikrikun in the first place was good? So the Gemara says, No, how do we explain that Mishnah from Gitin? No, when do we say it's not a valid sale from the Sikrikin, only in a circumstance where he said, okay, go and acquire it. So that he wasn't serious about it. But in a case where he did it with a contract and he legitimately intended to sell it, it's going to be a valid sale. So that's a distinction. In that case over here, he did it with a contract. So therefore, if Una says it's a valid sale, but the case of the Sikrikin, there was no contract. So therefore, it wasn't a valid sale. Says, and according to Shmuel, who says, even with a contract, even if he said to the Sikrikan with a contract, it's not a valid sale. What's the difference between the case of the Sikrikan, according to Shmuel, and the case of Rafuna? So the Gemara says, Shmuel would admit that if he gave the, if the Sikrikan gave him money, then it's a valid sale. That the uh, excuse me, we'll, we'll look at the Rosh He reads it a little differently. Zelo Kachman is Sikrik, and Shmuel would admit that the one who bought it from the Sikrik, and when he went back to the Balabayas, when Sh- Shimon in our case went back to Reuben, he, he gave him money. And so, since he accepted the money, since Reuben accepted the money, indeed, basically sold it. And that's like the case of where you forced him to sell it, where you gave him the money. But if you wouldn't have given the money, then it wouldn't have been a valid sale. Because Rav Huna also says uh, that his case of Taluwa is where, it's, where he gets the money. But if he didn't get the money, then it would not be a valid sale. Because then it's a gift. And there, even Rav Huna would agree it's not valid. So that's what Shmuel is talking about here. That that's a distinction. The case of Sekrikun, he, he, the guy who originally had the property wasn't given money. And so in the case of Shmuel... Uh, in the case of Rafuna, he was given money. So Gemara says, Urav Bibi, the Messiah, Ba Mishmed Rav Nachman. But what about the following case? That we, didn't we say Rav Bibi said earlier in the name of Rav Nachman? Remember, we said in the, that uh, Gazlan, who brought that a robber who brought a proof, his proof is not a proof. And we don't. Uh, we don't give him back the field. And then Rav Bibi added, but he gets the robber will get his money back that he gave the robber had given money to the person who claimed to his rob. So we see from here that according to Rabibi, that even if he gave, if the robber gave money to the person being robbed, it's not a valid sale. And this contradicts Rav Huna because Rav Huna says, tell you, Zabin, Zabini, Zabina. And here we're saying it's not a valid sale. And that would be the same question on the case of the Mas- uh, that's the same well by the Sakrikin. And if they gave the Sakrikin or the Lokef money, money to the, that if the Sakrikin gave money or the purchaser gave money to the Balabayas, it shouldn't work. So it's a question on Rafuna from Urav Bibi to Messiah by Mishmed Rav Nachman, Karka Elo Mos Yesh. So they'll get his money back, which means it wasn't a valid sale. Michael Mamer. So what would Rafuna, how did Rafuna explain how Rav Bibi contradicts him? He says, Rav Bibi Mamer, who? Rav Bibi, Rabibi was, he was just saying over a teaching 
it wasn't a Mishnah or a Brisa. And if, uh, so the way Rashbam reads it is Rav Bibi is not saying his own teaching, but he was just saying a teaching from the time of the Tanayim and Amorayim, but it wasn't, it didn't have the authority of a Mishnah, because it wasn't actually in a Mishnah. So it wasn't as authoritative. So it was a Mamer who. But Rav Huna was really, Rav Huna was saying, listen, this is, uh, this is just a, a statement floating out in the name of the Tanayim, but you haven't attributed it to a Mishnah or a Brisa, so I'm not bound by it. Says Rav HaElchus, I told you, Vezab and Zabina Zabina. He says, if you suspended him and sold him, it's a valid sale. And below Amran, when do we say it's a valid sale? El Vesadistam. That's in a case where he agreed to sell one of his fields, meaning to say the guy was being forced, we're on top of 48B, the guy was being forced, went down on his own, and he said, I'll sell you this field. He had, he was forced to sell a field, let's say he had 10 fields. He decided to sell this one because he did. he's the one who chose. The, the seller was the one who in the end chose which field to sell. Although the Sada Zoo, but if the guy is forcing him, says, sell me field A, and then he has to sell field A, then it's not going to be effective because, because there he was forced to sell the specific field. It was so the tsunami law, and also in this case uh, where he forced him to sell this specific field, we don't say that it's not valid. Where he had no ability to get out of it. But he had ways to wiggle out of it. Then we're not going to say it's a valid. Then we're not going to say it's a for sale, and then we're going to say it's valid. I skipped a line. Also, in the case of this field, we say it's not valid only in a case where he didn't count the money because he counted the money. He chose he's accepting it even against his will. Then we don't say this one. And also, we only say this in a case where he wasn't able to wiggle out. So, but if he was able to wiggle out by some excuse, like, for example, wait for me, Rashbam says, until tomorrow or until my wife comes home, I want to discuss it with her. But if he could have wiggled out from it, then we're going to say it's, uh, then it's a valid sale because clearly he wasn't under duress. And the law in all these cases is the Ave Zabine Zabine. In all these cases, we're saying it's a valid sale of field beside the zoo. And even if he says, sell me this specific field and he sold that specific field, it's a valid sale. Why? Gemara says, and it, this is like typical Gemara, the Gemara is going to compare the case of the forced sale to a case of a forced marriage. A woman, you forced to marriage. It's like you're saying, forcing a person to sell me this specific field. And Amemar taught, till you have a Kaddish, Kiddush of Kiddush. And if you force the woman to be betrothed to you, it's a valid betrothal. So just like by a betrothal it works, so too by a forced field it works. But, so Mar Baravashi challenges Amemar. He says, no, by a betrothal, it won't work. If you try to force the betrothal, it's not a valid betrothal, but certainly it's not valid. And that's how that's how the Rambam learns. By a wife, you cannot force her. So what do we say? But we say, who was such Loga Hogan? He acted in a, a inappropriately, meaning to say. He didn't act according to the law in trying to marry her against her will. also emotional So therefore, even though technically speaking it would have been valid, we're going to not follow the technical law and disqualify it. Why? Afkinu The rabbis uprooted the kedushin, meaning even though technically speaking it's a valid, you're valid to force, or it's a va- for, the duress is a valid law, sale. Valid marriage, but in this case, we're going to uproot it because he did not act appropriately. So, I'm a Ravino Ravashi, the Kaddish Bekaspa. That works if he betrothed her with money. There, the rabbis have the ability because of what's called Hefker Bezdin Hefker. 
Uh, well, there's two ways to read this. One is because the rabbis had the ability to declare money ownerless. That's Hefker, Bezin, Hefker. Or else we could say because maybe Kedush and Mikaspa is just rabbinic. Uh, and, and so therefore the rabbis have the ability to uproot it. But... Kiddush, but Bia, Maiko, and Mamer. But if he betrothed her with Bia, with with relations, how would the rabbis uproot that? If that's a biblical obligation. Rashbam says the the chiluk is like this: that when he betrothed her with his body, with Bia, he did an action on her body. How can the Chalim say that it's not Bia? The Chalim could say the money is not money. But Bia, he he actually did it. And some say Rashbah gives another explanation. That Kiddush and Mekesef is Dirabanan, and the rabbis have the right to uproot it. But Kiddush and Bia is biblical. That's the Arisa. What can they say? What can what can they say? And the Rashbam rejects that approach. He says it's a mistake. Okay. So he rejects the approach that draws a distinction between Rabbanan and the Arisa. So the Gemara says, Amar la, Amar la, Amar la. So Ravashi responds to Ravina, Shavu Rabban will be lost if he lost Nus. The rabbis have the ability to designate this Bia as Nus. They said it's licentious, it's not for the purpose of marriage. Mm-hmm. Now the Gemara tells us an incident about Tavi. Tavi, Toa le Papi Akinara. Tavi went ahead and he suspended a person on a tree that was called a kinara tree. And he said, uh, sell me this field. Some say he suspended him because he wanted him to sell him his kinara tree. So Tavi suspended Papi, uh, let's go with the first approach, on a kinara tree because he wanted him to sell him his field. Vizabin, and then he indeed sold it. Chasim Rav Barchana Amudah V'ashkalta. But Rav Barchana was the witness on two documents. First, on the Mudah. The Mudah we already had earlier, a few days ago. This is a document of coercion that you sign this document in advance and saying, listen, I'm going to sell the field tomorrow, but I don't really intend to sell it. I'm just being forced. And then Rav Barchana also signed on the deed of sale. So he signed it on the Mudah and on the Ashkalta. So Amar Rav Huna, the one who signed on the muda is signing properly, meaning to say it's a valid uh, coercion document to disqualify the sale. And the one who signed on the subsequent sale, that's also valid. So meaning to say it's the, the coercion document is valid and the sales document is valid. And says, that doesn't make sense. It can't be. If the coercion document is good, then the sale document is no good. And if the sale document is no good, then the co- if the sales document is good, then the coercion document is no good. How could they, they're two mutually exclusive documents? How could they both be good? So the Gemara says, no, this is what Rav Huna is saying. And he's saying, we're not for the muda, we're not for the coercion document. If it weren't for the fact that there was a coercion document, I would say that the that the sales document is valid, that even though they suspended him and forced him to sell it, it's valid. Because the coerced sale is valid, says Rafuna. And Rafuna I'm Rafuna tell you of his Zavina. Rafuna follows his logic because he says if you suspended him and forced him to sell it, it's a valid sale. Is, is this really the case that Rafuna says if you force him to sell something, it's a valid sale? Is it really the case that's the halacha that we pass him like Rafuna? If the witnesses say, the witnesses who sign on a contract, they say that, that nothing actually happened. This is a loan document. Rashbam says, what's a shtar amana? That they didn't actually lend anything, but they wrote it in advance. And they said, basically, they wrote in advance that Ruben will lend Shimon a million dollars. And when Shimon will need the money, will be uh, uh, that Ruben will lend Shimon a million dollars. And Shimon saying, okay, listen, I'm writing in advance. And when I need it, I'll get it from you. But it never actually took place. The borrower is believing the lender that he's not going to collect on this unless he'll actually lend the money. 
And so, and, and what happened was he put a lien on his property from this moment. And so therefore, even if it'll end it to him, let's say next month, the lien will start from right now. So, so the witnesses who say it was a Staramana ain't them on him. We're not going to believe them to disqualify the contract because how can they they want to say, oh yeah, we signed it, but it didn't really take place. No, you have a contract that took place. But if they say muda, ah, oh, you dvarenu, ain't them on him. But if they say it was forced, it was uh, that we were, if they say, uh, if they say, if the witnesses on the contract say it was forced uh, that he that the seller gave us a moda uh, before he wrote the contract and he said he's doing it under duress, ain't that money? We don't go. We're not going to believe him. And so, therefore, since Rabbi Rachana signed a muda, signed this contract, the muda should be disqualified. So the Gemara says, "Yeah, Hani Mili Al When do we say we don't believe the muda if it was an oral? Uh, where the witness testified that this is what he did orally. That the that the that the oral claim and that in front of them should not disqualify a contract of a bestara, but if it's actually written down as a muda asi then the muda will come and cancel out the the muda will come and cancel out the the subsequent sale. So we'll stop here and and we'll do tomorrow's daf at uh, five o'clock tonight. Five o'clock tonight. We'll do tomorrow's daf. Shkoch to everybody.